Alright guys, what's going on? Welcome to today's video. As you guys can see, we are doing a deadlift tutorial video today. We're going to do a complete breakdown of both sumo deadlifts and conventional deadlifts. So you guys really love the squat tutorial video that I did previously and I think so many people have just been asking about the compound movements, how to do them. There's so many different moving parts. It's confusing. It's difficult to master. So I just wanted to make sure you guys got like a breakdown with all of the steps and cues that have worked for me and that have worked for many, many other successful compound lifters. and get started we're gonna go ahead and start with talking about equipment that you need or that would be beneficial to you so a few things that I would recommend shoes I would recommend wrestling shoes deadlift shoes you can get deadlift slippers you can also use chucks and you can also just do it barefooted the reason behind this is that having a flat sole and having something really really close to the floor it just helps you to keep your center of gravity and it also helps you to have a shorter distance between where you have to pull the bar and then to your lockout so if you have a heel if you're using a squat shoe it just gives you a longer distance to pull the bar and then it also just doesn't give you the right leverages you want your foot to be completely flat I also recommend using a belt so I had personally a I think it's a 10 millimeter belt four inches thick, you can get one on bodybuilding.com. I said in the squat tutorial video that I personally like a lever belt. It'll lever and it'll close right in front of you. And then a prong belt is just like a regular belt where there's two prongs and they go in the holes. I highly recommend actually practicing your form without a belt for the start. It does help you brace your core against it because when you're doing compound lifts, you have to brace your core, right? You have to make sure that your intra-abdominal pressure is tight so your body stays neutral, your spine stays neutral, and having a belt just has, reminds your body to push out against something. So you're actually supposed to like push out er, that way. <laughs> you're not supposed to breathe in. When you're breathing, you're not supposed to breathe in like and suck your stomach in. You're supposed to push it out. So having something against your stomach right here is actually gonna help you remember to do that properly. I recommend getting a belt, practicing without a belt for a while, but it does help you with those heavier lifts. Another piece of equipment that I do recommend getting, if you guys aren't powerlifting and you're not focusing on powerlifting, you're not ever going to compete in powerlifting, you can get some Versa grips or some regular straps. You can get these both on bodybuilding.com. But what these do essentially is that you would wrap it around like so. <laughs> You would wrap it around your wrist like this and then this piece would go right where your hand is and then you would make it tight on your wrist and then the bar would go essentially right between this thing and the bar. So you would wrap it around the bar like this and then this would, the bar would be right here. That would be where it would take your grip out of it. So it actually makes the deadlift easier, but it does, it is beneficial if you guys are just focusing on muscle building. But if you are powerlifting, I recommend just getting some shock or something like that. If you're struggling with your grip, I wouldn't recommend using straps only because you cannot use them in competition and it does help to practice your grip strength. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the setup. So what you're gonna do to get set up for a sumo deadlift, you're gonna focus on first your foot placement and your hand placement. Foot placement for a sumo deadlift, you're actually gonna be putting your feet out wide. The width and how wide you actually go is gonna depend on you, how comfortable you feel. But I definitely recommend going a past shoulder width apart, and then you're gonna keep your toes pointed slightly outward because if you keep your toes forward, when you actually perform the deadlift, your knees will get in the way. So what you wanna do is keep your feet outward and actually rotate your knees outward slightly once you actually get into the deadlift position. When you're setting up for your hand placement for a sumo deadlift, you're actually gonna bring your hands straight down as you can possibly get them. I recommend putting like at least a pinky on either end where the gripped part of the bar is just to help with your grip. There's a few different grips that you can do. I recommend starting with a double overhand grip. So your grip's gonna be like this, just straight down. Both arms are double overhand and that just helps keep your muscular balance. Switch grip does help when you get heavier. I personally enjoy switch grip much better when I'm getting really heavy in weight because the bar doesn't slip out of my hands as easily because it can only go one direction or another. When you're in overhand grip, it can slip out a little bit more easily. So I recommend starting with double overhand. So at the sumo deadlift, 
splits, like I said, feet are gonna be out, toes are gonna be pointed out, and your hands are gonna go straight down into the bar and grab the bar. Setting up for a conventional deadlift is a little bit different, so when you put your feet into position, so you're gonna do slightly out from shoulder width apart, but not that far apart. A lot of the people that I've watched other videos for deadlift tutorials, they say that if you put your feet in the position where you feel like you would do a vertical jump, so if you're pretending to do a jump straight up, like a squat jump, the position that your feet are in is usually where you're most powerful, and it's usually just shoulder width apart, and then your toes are gonna be pointed forward in the forward direction. For a conventional deadlift, that's how you're gonna set up your feet. And then when it comes to your hands, you're gonna put your hands just right outside of your shins as close as you can get them because that's gonna keep uh, your body as tight and compact as possible. Execution of the two lifts. Once you get your hands and feet into position, something that really helps me as a good cue is to put your hips back into a position where your shoulders are in line with the bar. You want your shoulders to be right directly in line with it because you want the bar to come up in a straight line, as straight of a line as possible. So if you kind of go over the bar and you grab it in sumo, you are bending over slightly. So what you're gonna wanna do is sink your hips back a bit, but not too much. You actually don't want to put your hips back into position where they're too low. You wanna make sure that your spine is neutral there. So push your hips back a little bit, and then you're gonna think about tucking your pelvis slightly under as well. Just thinking about that helps you keep your spine neutral. It'll help you stop from doing the Instagram girl bend back type deal where your pelvis is anteriorly tilted. You want it to be the other direction. As you're learning, don't get too frustrated if you can't think about all the things that are moving at once. There is a lot of moving parts. So when it comes to your upper body, one of the cues that had I have heard in the past from a trainer that really, really helped me was think of your back and your legs as a dial. This can go for sumo or conventional. So something that you really need to focus on is thinking about your lats, turning your back dial on all the way before you even begin the lift. So that just means tightening your lats and then packing your shoulders down as tight as possible. And that's gonna help your shoulders get into the right position. You wanna think about your weight being directly behind the bar. So you don't want any of your weight being forward because then you'll tip forward and you won't be in the right position. So you're going to squeeze your lats, you're going to squeeze your shoulders, you're going to pack those shoulders and you're going to feel tension in your glutes and hamstrings. You're going to pack that. And then when you're actually going to start the movement, don't think about pulling the bar off the ground, guys. I know it's a deadlift, I know it's a pull, but I like to think about it as a push movement. So you're actually gonna be pushing your feet slightly out and down. So instead of thinking about pulling the bar, think about pushing out of the ground because if you're pushing and your legs are very, very strong, your legs are stronger than your arms, aren't they? <laughs> so if you think about it that way and then everything is really tight at the top and all you have to do there is push your hips forward. So you're gonna squeeze your glutes, push your hips forward, and the bar will just fly up with you. All of the same cues in the sumo deadlift do apply to the conventional deadlift, but instead of pushing your feet out, you're just gonna think about pushing your feet down and into the floor because your toes are straight, right? So push your feet down and into the floor, make sure that back dial is completely turned on, and then turn the leg dial on slowly as you come up. So make sure everything is tight. Your breathing is going to be focused on making sure that your intra-abdominal pressure is pushing out on your belt or just pushing out in general. Some people start their breath at the top of the movement. I like to actually start my breath once I'm all set up into position right before I start the lift. Make sure before you start the lift, you take a deep breath and pack everything, get into position, and then all you have to do is push down, the bar comes up with you, push your hips forward, and you've completed the deadlift. remember when you're doing a deadlift number one be patient this is the biggest thing that has changed my life when it comes to deadlifting be patient when it comes to moving up in weight but actually be patient with the rep itself so not every single rep is gonna fly up off the ground and then if you just think about being patient and being technical it's gonna actually come better and it's going to feel better for you and it's gonna be much more safe actually as well to make sure that you're being patient while performing the lift the right way. Major key number two, do not just force the weight off the ground, guys. It's gonna cause for bad form, and if you can pull the weight off the ground with good form and you can do heavy weight, 
that is far more impressive than if you could do heavy weight and you look like you're going to break your back, to be completely honest, especially on YouTube if you're recording any lifts and putting them on the internet. There are many, many people that will comment and be like, you're gonna break your back. So either way, just make sure that you're being patient with the lift and you're also making sure that you're not just forcing and pulling the bar off the ground. I think a major key for me for number two, when you're not forcing the bar off the ground, you're also going to not be pulling off the ground, you're gonna be pushing. And then the third major key, be intentional and make sure that you're technical with every single lift and you're intending to do all of the right things during every single rep. Not just for your set, you're not just going to be going up and down and not focusing on it. Be intentional, guys. Make sure that you're focusing and make sure that you're doing everything right because it's gonna feel better, it's going to give you more longevity in your lifting career, and you're actually going to be able to lift more weight and therefore build more muscle when you're doing it the right way. So I hope you guys enjoyed this deadlift tutorial video. If you guys have any more tips or if you think that there's anything that I missed, make sure you guys comment below in the comment section because there will be some people reading the comment section looking for answers if there's any, anything that I personally missed. But either way, make sure you guys are smashing the like button down below. That'll just help more people be able to watch the deadlift tutorial video. And if you've ever been a beginner in the gym, you know how hard it is and how much you would love to have watched this before you even started lifting. So make sure you guys smash that like button. Make sure you guys comment below, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.